This presentation demonstrates the effects of compaction on soil pores, pore volume, and bulk volume of the soil. We ended with this slide in the soil density presentation, recognizing that the amount of pressure applied results in different changes in bulk volume and bulk density. This presentation examines these changes in more detail and observes the changes in soil samples subjected to different amounts of pressure. In the previous slide, we saw that pore volume and total volume, also known as the bulk volume, decrease as pressure is applied. Observe the changes in the total volume in the diagram and in the soil in the jar. These jars are approximately 13 centimeters tall. As progressively greater force is applied, there is an even greater decrease in pore volume. Each pressure increment decreased the height of the soil in the jar by about 1.5 centimeters. These images are taken from the pictures of the soil in the jars in the previous slide and edited to show the aggregate and pore arrangement in the soil. The progression in the slides is from no compaction to severely compacted. The dark spaces are pores. They get smaller and fewer as increasing pressure is applied. When a soil is compacted, aggregates break and soil particles are pressed closer together. Pores become smaller, so the volume of pores decreases. Compaction is most severe at the point of contact, for that is where the pressure is greatest. During foot or tire traffic, this occurs at the soil surface. During cultivation, it occurs just below the tillage depth, where plows, sweeps, discs, and other implements exert a shear force on the soil. The result is a zone of high bulk density known as a tillage pan. Pressure was applied to the soil surface, resulting in three zones in this photo. In the first zone, aggregate destruction and pore compression are greatest just below the surface, resulting in the greatest bulk density. There are almost no visible aggregates or pores. In the transition zone, the soil is grading from the compacted condition near the surface to the undisturbed condition beyond the reach of the effects of the pressure applied at the soil surface. Pressure at the surface is distributed to the soil particles below in a dispersing pattern that gets wider as it goes deeper, resulting in a bulb of compaction below the point of impact. Observe that pores and aggregates become more visible near the bottom of this zone. Zone 3 is unaffected, out of reach of the pressure applied at the surface. Aggregates and pores of varying shapes and sizes are readily visible. Compaction restricts air and water movement into and through the soil. These are the three soils used earlier to show the change in volume that occurs during a compaction event. 50 milliliters of water was simultaneously added to each of these jars. The advance of the wetting front is an indication of soil structure and the damage done by compaction. Here we trace the wetting front in each of the jars. The wetting front advanced 8 to 10 centimeters in the non-compacted soil. The pattern is not uniform due to preferential flow, which indicates the presence of macropores that are open to the surface. The wetting front advanced only about 5 centimeters from the surface in the slightly compacted soil, and there was less preferential flow, resulting in a more uniform advance of the wetting front. In the severely compacted soil, the wetting front advanced less than 3 centimeters. The pattern was uniform, indicating no preferential flow due to the destruction of all macropores. Destruction of the surface soil structure also resulted in reduced infiltration, which can be observed by the water ponded on the surface of this soil. In the same soils with greater bulk density as you see here, the wetting front travels less deep in the same time interval with increasing levels of compaction. Texture also affects bulk density, so we cannot say that a sand is compacted just because it has a greater bulk density than a loam. 
The wetting front is generally not a straight line due to the presence of some larger pores that provide preferential flow paths for the water to move through the soil faster. These larger pores are the first ones destroyed during compaction. This is the top view of those same soils. There are many aggregates of various shapes and sizes in the non-compacted soil. A few small aggregates are visible in the slightly compacted soil, though it is obvious that compaction flattened the surface. No aggregates are visible in the severely compacted soil, and the surface is sealed, resulting in water ponding on the surface. In summary, when a soil is compacted, macropores are compressed. Aggregates are crushed. Soil particles are pressed closer together. Volume of pores decreases as pores become smaller. Bulk volume decreases with the decrease in pore size. Decreasing pore size and volume result in increases in bulk density. Compaction restricts air and water movement into and through the soil.